people to give people a fear of oil going even higher. Just drove it a buck. Went one dollar higher after yeah. that, after that explosion. I mean that's that's a whole other story there. I mean here's Willie Nelson uh, almost uh, throwing himself in the grave with the biodiesel there. I mean he's got the whole thing invented that we could convert the entire country into biodiesel within years and completely get off the you know the the crude oil and start running it off the off the starch, the corn starch. Meaning the farmers would be eating it, the whole economy would be thriving. It's a spin. Oh uh, no, all of that is all of those just spin. All of that is just spin. This uh, alternative energy is just spin. Yeah, it's for us to decide that no way are we going to put up with any other kind of energy other than oil. And that's what's yeah. going to draw us into the Middle East. That's and what these guys figure on. That's what they feel is going to, they want to happen. It's sickening to even hear Bush and to watch him on TV saying, you know, we're addicted to oil and America's addicted to oil. Meanwhile, he's, you know, conjuring up all these deals with the, the people that are selling us this oil. Well, it's you can, you you know, can, like the, you can you see know? they're hurting us in one direction. Uh, don't you of get course. the picture? You feel it, Mike, don't you? Yeah, you and it's, you know what? It's, it's, it's pretty sad. I and mean, it's sad that not too many people actually get to see the point. They're sort of like running around like blind sheep paying their rent. And, you well, know, no, they're believing, they're believing the authorities. Look, you hear it on every single newscast. The authorities okay. said. Yep. You know. It's, you know. We're supposed to be the authority here. We're the people that are, you know, putting these governments in power, and right. instead yeah. we're running around like sheep. Yeah, no. Space, you're awesome. The Illuminati run the world. Thanks a lot for the call. Go ahead, Peter. You're on with the Spaceman. It's AM 640 Toronto Radio. By the way, calls 416-870-6400, star 640 on your cell. Hi. Hi, Spaceman. Yep. Uh, I was wondering if, if you had any insight on if there's going to be a, an attack on in Toronto. We're just uh, beginning to get onto the radar now. As a matter of fact, last Friday, the Americans handed over the area that they're looking after in Afghanistan, which, by the way, when I say Afghanistan, it is Taliban's backyard. Mm -hmm. The Taliban set up originally by the CIA to run opium from Afghanistan through Turkey into Europe. That's what the Taliban were used for originally. Uh -huh. Okay? Now, they were fighting the Russians for a while to try and control that opium. The Russians and them lost over about, about over a million people were sacrificed there during that Russian war with the Taliban. These guys know it better than you know your own room at home. And that's where they sent our Canadians to fight. No longer to peacekeep, but to fight now. We're going to be a search and destroy mission. That's what we're going to be doing. Rick Hillier has said we're going to chase them down and kill the enemy. Kill the Taliban. Once we start doing that, then you're going to be seeing a retaliation on this other end to fuel us even more to get even madder at the Taliban to send even more people over to try and flush them out. Yeah, but and then the whole black magic scenario begins to build on it's us against them now. Our ideals against their ideals. And their old line is better to fight them over in their backyard than to fight them here at home. Because, you know, when we fight them here at home, you can't see them. You don't know where they come from and you don't know where they go once they perpetrate the event because they are mystically Al-Qaeda. They don't have a uniform. They just disappear. All right. Thanks a lot. And that's what we're in for if we go in. Well, no. If we already are going in. So you can count on retaliation from Al-Qaeda once we start killing Taliban in earnest over there. Gillian, you're on with Space. It's AM 640 Toronto Radio. Go ahead. Um, I was wondering, uh, first time listener, when you're talking about the Illuminati, are they a specific family group or? Certainly are. Um, you want to believe they are. Uh, look at the, uh, sure, uh, just go to any website and look at, look for any major corporation, find any major corporation with the, uh, controlling shareholders and you'll run into these people over and over again. They sit on the boards of these corporations over and over again. And they are heads of huge, uh, 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 governments as well as huge corporations. Okay, thank you. And, 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 and they end up being the crowned heads of Europe, which are all connected, are all family. Oh. All intermarried. Oh, boy. To the point where they now have diseases. Oh, great. Because that's how you keep money in the family, Gillian. 
you don't invite any other family into your family. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The Bush crime family's close business dealings with the royal houses of Kuwait, that's the Sabah family, and Dubai, that's the Maktoum family. Either border is on or is treason. The Sabah family from Kuwait and their business cohorts are skimming hundreds of millions of dollars from the shipping of military material through Kuwait to the U.S. forces in Iraq. American taxpayers' money is just going straight into the Sabah coffers. And a lot of this money is being used to fund the Sunni insurgency in Iraq that is directed against U.S. troops. Isn't that interesting? George Herbert Walker Bush, George W.'s dad, in 93, when he was president, was awarded an honorary doctorate by Kuwait University in Kuwait's highest honor, the Order of Mubarak, the Great. Bush was accompanied on a Kuwaiti Airways flight by his sons Neil and Marvin, and former Secretary of State James Baker III, former Chief of Staff Johnny Sununu, and Joint Chief's Operation Director General Thomas Kelly. After that trip, Neil landed lucrative con contracts with the Kuwaiti Ministry of Electricity and Water. Well, what about Marvin, the other son? Well, he got defense contracts for his clients. Well, what about James Baker, Secretary of State? Well, he nailed down deals for Enron. And to get things going with Saddam, Kuwait staged a round up of some Iraqi whiskey smugglers said to be planning the assassination of George Herbert Walker Bush during his visit to Kuwait. And President Clinton launched a cruise missile attack on Iraq in retaliation for the phony assassination attempt. Let's see how it works. To these people at this high echelon of power security is a joke business ethics a joke Marvin Bush son of George Herbert Walker brother of George W served on the board of Securicom renamed Stratasec which had contracts to provide security for Dulles Airport and a World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. Securicom's backers included a few Kuwaitis through a company called Kuam Corp, Kuwaiti American Corporation. Kuam also financially backed Aviation General, formerly Commander Aircraft, which brokered the sales of airplanes to the Canadian or to the National Civil Aviation Training Organization, located in Giza, Egypt. Giza, Egypt, by the way, is the hometown of the lead hijacker, Mohammed Atta, and the only civilian pilot training school in Egypt. Mohammed Atta, if you'll recall, and all that rubble of the World Trade Center, they found his driver's license intact. Mm -hmm. This National Aviation, Civil Aviation Training Organization, has a training agreement with Embry-Riddle University in Daytona Beach, Florida, the flight school that was investigated by the FBI for possible training of at least one of the 9-11 hijackers. So you see what I mean when I said earlier on A View from Space on AM640 Toronto Radio that they did not come over and break into the United States. They were asked over, housed and trained and let loose. Neil, Marvin's brother, son of 
George Herbert Walker, brother of George W., also developed close connections with the Maktoum family of Dubai, the same family that has interests in the state-owned firm Dubai Ports World. Yeah. At the one that's poised to take over the operations of, not six, 21 U.S. ports. After they buy the British P&O Company, Peninsula and Oriental Steam Navigation Company. Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the finance minister of Dubai, and someone who certainly had his pulse on the millions of dollars sent through the Emirate and the Taliban, Al Qaeda, and Pakistani madrasas, and assorted Islamic charities too. This guy's very well connected. Business partners of the Bushes. United Emirates banking insiders have stated that accounts used to fund the Taliban and Al-Qaeda involve members of the Dubai royal family. These people who work for the banks in Dubai report that in March of 2002, United States Secretary of Treasury Paul O'Neill visited Dubai and asked for some documents on a $109,000 money transfer from Dubai to a joint held account by hijackers Mohammed Atta and Marwan al Shehi at SunTrust Bank in Florida. O'Neill also asked the United Arab Emirate authorities to close down accounts used by Al-Qaeda and affiliated partners like Victor Boot, that's B-O-U-T, if you're Googling some of these names I'm talking about. The UAE complained about O'Neill's demands to the Bush administration, O'Neill's pressure on the UAE and the Saudis contributed to Bush firing him as Treasury Secretary in December of 2002. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. No matter where your heart lies. So the United Arab Emirates, as far as this deal goes, are allies in the global war on terrorism. Well, after the information I've just given you, you have to have some kind of doubt at least, if not believing what I'm saying. Michael, Spaceman, AM640, Toronto Radio. What a spell, huh? I'm telling you, uh, Space, it's been a while since I've been talking to you back in the summer. It's Michael here from Parkdale. And before I get started with my vision, I'd like to point out to everybody here in Toronto that chemtrails in the late night, clearing it in early morning and at noon, harp is in the constant practice. Evil and negative energy waves are a constant use of this evil government's viruses, flus, maladies in the air, food, and water, which leads me to my dream vision. Early morning, February 17th, Friday. Hold on, Michael. Those chemtrails, that's why we have summer, or sorry, spring during the weekdays and then winter on the weekend. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Continue. Anyone that understands that knows yeah, exactly, exactly what we're Exactly. Yeah, you know it, man. You know it. And so here we are. I was in the spirit having a dream. It was early Friday morning, just the day before your last show last week. And uh, in the spirit, I was, I was, um, what looked like a spiral incline walk past, much like a highway, you know. I was standing there in the spirit, and I was looking up in the air. I heard, you know, the sound in the air, and here it was a war plane, a green on top, white underbelly with black lettering and, and numbering, and uh, it was in fighter mode, and it was heading south to America, down to states there over across Lake Ontario, and. Uh, I heard air raid sirens going on in the dream, and I'm looking at everybody, and it was like everybody 